Yeah. Elvis? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I cut. Yeah, we cut it by 15 times. By 15 times. Went down eight and come back. He wasn't doing the bridge right. I told Sam, I said, look, man, let's change the bridge. Let's change the drum on the downbeat in the middle. He couldn't sit there and just t t all the way through. That's when the guitar comes in, just go to the downbeat. And uh, they didn't think much of the idea starting off. See, about years ago, we listened to radios. You hear these horses going, like that. I told him, I said, just do that on the drum. And believe it or not, we had five records come out after that sounding like that. And yet they thought it, they thought it was an old idea. You see what I mean? Sam didn't think much of that. man said, that's too old. Well, five cover records afterwards, when that one went number one in the nation, see, we had five cover records after that. And, uh, oh, it's a lot of things down there that, that went on. Now, you take, uh, a lot of those guys just came on down later and got on the bandwagon. You see what I mean? Warren Smith, all, now, they had some good sounding things, but, but they were killing each other. You see what I mean? Robs, after, I'll show you what killed uh, Warren Smith's record. Ooby Dooby. Cut hit. See, that's where Sam was hurting himself, and he didn't even know it. He was fitting, he'd have killed Elvis with Carl. See, he cut, gone, gone. Well, Elvis, I told him, I said, man, you better get out in here now while getting's good. They got him, they still didn't know how to record him up there. All they did was put a big band behind him and stuff, man, and throw so much money behind him till he had to go then. But when he was on Sun, man, we cut stuff on him down there that people would get up and walk a mile to get the record. Really and truly. I mean, it was the greatest damn sound I ever heard in my life, I'll be honest with you. I, I haven't heard nobody come close at the sound that we got at 706 Union. They, they cut, I've heard them cut stuff now with slap back on it and all. It don't come nowhere close. Because I got, I got some of those records out there and I listen to them and I know man. And it ain't but three pieces on it. Listen to that Mr. Train on it. Listen to that damn rhythm guitar on that. See, a lot of people think, a lot of people think he's following the bass. He's following his own rhythm guitar, pulling it up and down. See, it's a trick to it. I'll tell you, it is. Uh, on Johnny Cash's stuff, too. See, Johnny Cash worked about six months on Cry Cry, Hey Porter, and a thing called There's a Wide Open Road. We couldn't decide which one to do. He was working with Monster TV. I used to go out to his house, man. We'd sit down and work all night long, arranging that stuff. That's all I've done down there for God knows. Then some boys wrote a song, Daydreaming, by Bud Deckerman. You ever heard it? Well, come by and slam them. Oh, man. Anyhow, they went on out and meet the records. They done it, and it come a pretty big hit. They come back by the second time. They wrote this wedding gown of white. This man, Sam, told me to do these songs then. I didn't like them. I didn't like a damn one of them, man. I, that wasn't my time. I just didn't like it at all. Damn fiddle and all that stuff. I just didn't dig it, man, at all. Uh, damn, man. What did you, what did you let you play white? Huh? What did he let play you? What did he let you play white? I don't know. I really don't. I guess... I don't know. I guess he used me more or less to range and stuff, see. And, and he didn't he didn't spend everything he had, though, on Elvis, too, at the time, see. And uh, he had some things he started to release now. He really did. And he still got them, too. Chevy Singleton did not get them, because I've seen them since then. Sam's got them out of his house right today, and he won't let, won't let nobody. I came back, and I was down there one night. I tried to get him playing. This is 10 years later. Oh, yeah, man, he got him. He was drinking, but he wouldn't play him. I went back down a week later. Knox, yeah, we go back. Went back and every damn one of them gone. See, that's where all this stuff, well, this is where all this stuff came from, start with. See, I cut. I cut Blue Moon of Kentucky. That's all right, Mama. Baby, let's play house. We cut all that stuff, me and Scott and Bill. And, uh, well... I could take those old records and listen at them. So I'd go back and I'd pick up these old colored records and things. I'd listen at them. And I could tell which, they was cutting a tune called Trying to Get to You. It was put it out later. So when they bought it, they really, really, well, I went back and listened at the record. 
it ain't nowhere close to the record that the colored people played on. Now, they added piano stuff later, and it's, it's better. But just three pieces, it didn't sound right on the number. He was doing it. I went back and listened to the record, and I come back and told him, no, I said, they, ain't, they not nowhere close. So they got off the record, see. And that made Elvis mad. So we ain't gonna cut it. Why well, would not waste a lot of time on it, everything? And he didn't like the idea of it. Gone, gone. The car head out too. So he just picked his guitar up, walked on outside the dad gum door. That was the end of it. When? See, my contract was out with him. I wrote the song, and I showed it to him. And he didn't think much. At that time, he had a few hits, man. He couldn't, he wouldn't stop listening to nothing. See what I mean? And he was hardly ever down there. When you seen him, he was drunk. And uh, I made a little tape out here at Meter Records on Chelsea, one mic. It's got a drummer on it, believe it or not. Same boy playing drum, playing on, I forgot to remember, Jonathan Arrow. And uh, you can't hear it on the record, though. It's sitting way off over in the corner on one mic. It didn't pick it up, was it, Dan? So uh, we made it. I showed it to him, and he really didn't get... I didn't get no answer right then, so I said, the hell with it. I was gone. And then turn around and get a lawyer, get my money out. I forgot to remember. Huh? Get the copyright. Well, now, he owned the copyright on it. See, he owned the publisher. <laughs> Sam published it. See, all me and Stan, all me and him, that we shared the royalties off of uh, the writer's royalties. See, see. Now I had to get a lawyer to get my part of that. Really, I wasn't down here. I'm sure Stan got his part. He stayed on up there. He slaved for him for about. Ten more years after I left there. See, well, I put it this way: he got on the damn boat. Now that's what it is. You've heard it say getting on the boat. Jack Clement, Jerry Lee, all them guys got on the damn boat. It was already made. He could say, "Come here, boy, throw you in there and record you, and you already a damn hit, Jack." You see what I mean? It, if you could whistle, see, the sound was discovered the day we cut "Blue Moon of Kentucky." And that's all right, Mom. We could cut anybody. See, he could cut anybody. Now, believe it or not, all of them sound just like, too. If you don't believe it, you get the damn records and listen to them. I can, show you, I can show you where Carl sounds just like Elvis. He just had old boogie guitar behind him, you know what I mean? And a uh, little different on the guitar, but still listening to voices, the same thing. How did you get in touch with the He just came down here. See, they on the branches then all over the world. They were just as big as RCA Victor or anybody. See, they on their own branches just like RCA. R RCA pr pressed their records. If they needed anybody else to press records, they would call them in. And uh, they had a branch down here. They came down. He got in a damn plane and came down when he found out my contract was up up there. See, he kept me tied up up there for a long time, man. I didn't cut but four records for him. Four numbers, two records. One of them was on Flip and one of them was on Sun. Who? Henry Glover. Uh-uh. Uh, Lou Enos. You know him? He had Bonnie Lou, Bill Doggett, all those guys. Here And went up there, man, the studio up there. It was a big studio. It had a lot more equipment than we had. But they didn't have the damn sound. Huh? In Cincinnati. The first one. And the next one was cutting RCA. With the groups behind it, that, that group, you know, they were prison. They were in prison out there. Yeah, they're nice. For them. See, they brought them down. They still had chains around their legs. See, Sam went up there to prison and cut it. Cut the walking in the rain on them. See. See. Oh yeah, me, me, Carl. And Elvis and Johnny Cage. We played all over the South. Brown. Somebody sat in there? What was the reaction? Huh? What was the reaction? Oh, we just had big crowds, man. How are you doing that? But I, I did the country stuff, you know. 
at that time. See, that's all I had had out, so why not do it? See. Stan Kessler, he was playing steel with us. He was playing fiddle. Couldn't play it with a damn. Couldn't play a lick. Quint Clunch couldn't play either. To be honest with you, neither one of them. They just got on, got on the damn bandwagon up there, that's all, see. Huh? Yeah. He couldn't play it, but he he was there. <laughs> it was two meter. Huh? Who? No, I don't think Fernwood really ever got into it. They had one up on North Main, but it hell they didn't. Scotty got in there with them, and they had one record, Tragedy, and they cut it down at high. I worked down at high for a long time. I worked on, you know that thing Bill had out called Smoking? I, I wrapped the drumsticks in cotton, wrapped it tape, laid an upright bass down. You got the sound, see? They, they stole the goddamn thing. And of course, then they picked it up on the guitar and put a pencil on the guitar wrap. It got the same sound. Stole the piano part from a colored artist. Well, uh, I tell you what, I ain't been to them. Huh? Made a few demos. <laughs> a lot of people stole them. <laughs> Damn, it's messy, you ever seen your life. 